We've all heard about how cow burps are destroying the environment. It seems like people have beef with them, but are cattle seriously that bad? Hi, I'm Sierra with Eat for the Earth, and in this series we'll be examining the relationship between animal agriculture and the environment. Here's what's causing climate change, according to the UN. And yeah, there's a scientific consensus that reducing animal product consumption will greatly benefit the climate and environment in general. Specifically, the livestock sector's percentage estimates range from the UN accepted 14.5% to 87% of all anthropogenic emissions. The figures that the UN used to make the 14.5% estimate are from the early 2000s. So just because it's endorsed by them doesn't mean that it's the most accurate. In fact, the Board of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, or FAO, that is responsible for measuring the greenhouse gas emissions of livestock, is also responsible for supporting the industry. FAO is partnered with livestock industry stakeholders, and allows private livestock groups to influence their methodology to measure the climate change caused by livestock. So it is a flawed measurement, tainted with corporate interests, and is likely an underestimate. The UN also excludes livestock respiration from their measurement, operating under the theory that those emissions are balanced by photosynthesis. However, due to the exponentially increasing deforestation for livestock pasture, some studies show that this balance between plants and livestock may no longer exist. Estimates on the higher end may also include the double carbon dividend. Deforestation expert Gerard Wedderburn Bishop explains this concept. There's, there's a really interesting debate going on at the moment in science circles, and some are calling it the um, double climate dividend. You see, the, the land that we devote to grazing cattle and sheep, it's not just the extra deforestation that we do, it's also that land could be used for other purposes. And those other purposes could be habitat for wildlife, could be trees for drawing down the carbon. So they call it the double climate dividend. While ever you are growing cattle on the land, you are stopping the land from growing these other things, habitat and trees for carbon sequestration. So if you count that sequestration that's not happening as an emission, if you count that land's possibility of drawing down carbon, then suddenly animal agriculture becomes the greatest emission source on earth. While beef is the most egregious emitter among animal products, None is as clean as plants, with the rare exception of airship products like asparagus. The Johns Hopkins Center for a Livable Future reports, If global trends in meat and dairy intake continue, global mean temperature rise will more than likely exceed 2 degrees Celsius, even with dramatic emissions reductions across non-agricultural sectors. You heard that, right? Unless we slow animal production, it's going to be really hard to hit the climate bullseye for 2050. So reduction of meat and dairy is critical to avoid catastrophic climate change. Moving towards a plant-based world has the potential of having carbon dioxide emissions. And personal dietary emissions are also halved on a vegan diet. But some people may still be under the impression that local or free-range animal products are cleaner. However, swapping out less than one day per week's calories from beef and dairy to plant-based alternatives reduces emissions more than buying all your food locally. Free-range and grass-fed systems also emit up to four times as much greenhouse gases than factory farms. So it's also possible to somewhat reduce the emissions of livestock by making livestock production more efficient, which is basically making the animal's existence a living hell. But no one likes that solution. Besides carbon dioxide, methane is the most common greenhouse gas. It lasts around nine years in the atmosphere, and during a 20-year period traps around 84 times as much heat as carbon dioxide. Because of its short lifetime, it's often dismissed as unimportant. However, 
Reducing the amount of methane emitted is a much more rapid way to control climate change. And livestock is the number one emitter of methane. So while climate policy is attempting to tackle fossil fuels, animal agriculture is largely ignored. And this is a problem. But how about regenerative grazing? You may have seen Alan Savory's TED Talk claiming that intensively grazing cattle on grasslands will somehow solve climate change. But according to the Food Climate Research Network, in many parts of the world, the potential for grazing management to achieve sequestration is limited or absent. What the regenerative agriculture people are saying is that we can replenish the soil carbon and that will equal the emissions from the cows as well. It will, it will solve the climate crisis. Well, no. Sure, we might be able to replenish the soil carbon to a certain point, to an equilibrium, but most of the carbon dioxide that's been released is in the trees above the ground, not below the ground. And if we can bring the, the ground back up to what it was before, that's tremendous, but it's not profitable. So most of the world's producers are not going to do that. The, the regenerative agriculture principles are very resource intensive. So they're costly. So um, to, to cover those costs, is it, it just won't work. So regenerative agriculture in principle is great. Bring some carbon back into the soil, but it ignores the potential for growing carbon above the soil. And it, it will never equal the emissions from the cattle above the ground, never. Mm. And that's been studied thoroughly. So regenerative grazing is now used as a, a greenwash mantra by the big producers, big ag. Also, intensive grazing, as suggested by regenerative grazing advocates, also can hinder plant growth, which then prevents carbon sequestration in plants. Basically, this method needs perfect, pristine conditions. And in the end, while converting even more land to non-native cattle usage, the maximum amount of sequestration would make a negligible dent in total livestock emissions, while increasing methane and nitrous oxide emissions and encouraging further deforestation. Already 41% of the land in the U.S. is used for pastures and rangelands, and this is echoed worldwide. About 40% of the Earth's habitable land is used for livestock production. Do we really want to dig that hole deeper? Cattle farming and animal agriculture in general is a bull in a china shop. Mitigating its effects or trying to use it to better the environment is ineffective and can greatly backfire. There's a less roundabout way to benefit nature, rewilding. Reducing the livestock sector frees up land to reforce to grow more food for direct human consumption. Going vegan is the biggest way to reduce your personal impact on the environment. And yeah, one person going vegan isn't gonna change much. But one more person means one more putting pressure on world leaders. In the end, in order to stop the rapid deterioration of the environment, we need to grab the bull by its horns and steer our species in the right direction. We can't wait till the cows come home to stop the climate crisis.